Hi, I'm Tom Napper. I'm the rigger on board for Brunel. And we'll take you on a quick tour of the boat outside and inside and show you some of the systems. Here, uh, it's pretty simple up by the helm control. The helm's got quite enough on their mind with all the steering. Basically, it's just the keel. They can control the cant of the keel for attacking and jiving, particularly. Uh, if we come further back, behind you, Elaine, we have all of the ballast system. This is for filling the ballast tanks. We just push that down and a scoop goes into the water and we start filling the tanks with the aid of an electric pump as well to, to get it all up to the weather side. Uh, all of the safety gear, pretty simple, self-explanatory, uh, as you'd have on many boats really. We've not done anything racy about that other than carbon fiber cases and trying to reduce some weight. We have these, uh, the grinding handles here throughout the boat. These can be used to power hydraulics uh, and you change their function with foot buttons on the floor. They can be used to power hydraulics with this one or we can even link all three of these together so that six people can be used together to hoist any of the sails when we need to. You can also set them up individually so that we can have one trimming the main, you can have one of these could be trimming the jib and another one could be raising and lowering our dagger boards. And coming further forward, we have the main cockpit winch. This, as you see, can be responsible for a, a lot of lines here, including the, the furling lines. We have four furling lines in total, uh, two for the head source and two for the sails out on the end of the sprit. Let's come. Let's have a look at the boards next, shall we? Up forward we have down here, lots of lines, control lines for the jib. This looks messy, they're not set up as they would be for racing, but these are to allow us to adjust the sheeting position of the jib to essentially an infinite amount of places where we want them to, to be. Have a look at that. And then this, uh, you will rarely find on a cruising boat, these are the dagger boards we use to give us a little extra lift when sailing upwind in particular. Um, you raise the windward one and lower the leeward one. As you these, these haven't changed at all since the last race, have they? No, essentially the boats are the same. These, uh, this, this boat is the same boat that went around the world um, with Balbeckin and the rest of his Brunel team at the last round the world. Nothing's changed other than a refit. Uh, what else do you want to see on deck? Anything up forward to look at? Yeah, let's have a look at the bow sprit. Mind the hole here, walk down the side. These are all of the tack lines for the... Sorry, say that again. This is the tack line for the J3. Uh, we have a separate tack lines for every individual head source. So the J3, we move further forward. Oh, hold on. We have the tack line for the J2. These are controlled hydraulically, but through manpower. And then the J1 is a hank-on sail. The only hank-on sail we have. Everything else is on furlers. And here we have the two sprit tack lines. Um, again, there are furling sails out there for the Code Zeros, for the A3, etc. Okay, we've just come down. This is the first part of the boat we come into, so we're essentially pretty well midships. You've got the bunks here, where everyone will sleep. They'll sleep on the windward side of the boat all the time, so the boat's tacking, people have to tack as well from bunk to bunk. Here you have the water bottles, the AIS uh, safety gear essentially for if anyone goes over the side, and just water bottles for drinking and keeping hydrated. Uh, up here we have some instruments which are they're, they're rarely needed instruments. We have a defibrillator, hopefully never needed, and the engine instruments and a radar, again, not, not commonly used. This is the same on all the boats, Napper, is it? Everything's exactly the same. They're a one design class and they're ruthless about the one design, so everything is exactly the same. There's actually very little you can do to customise them. I mean, what about these pockets on the wallet? They are absolutely all the same right down to these details. Absolutely. These are all made by the same people for the, every boat. Um, some things are optional, you buy them, but if you buy them, you buy them from the boatyard so that they are all identical. Right. Same weight, same spec, same design, even down to... Uh, Pad eyes like this, where lashing pad eyes, all of these are essentially made by the same people and, and uh, every boat has the same. 
And this is this is your um, your galley here. This is the galley. Nothing luxurious as you imagine, but we do have fresh water, which is made on board with a, a water maker, so we don't have to carry lots of plastic bottles. And a kettle. That's essentially the only cooking implement we have. Kettle to rehydrate the freeze-dried food and to make tea and coffee and hot chocolate, which still we need even if you're ocean racing you need that on a night watch right and what do we get up forward uh further forward there's very little up here hang on uh we have a storm jib tied down there never been used only to show the the volvo that we have it and a spare rudder and then you can see the signatures these are actually from the last round the world all these signatures of people that have come and had it around from school children to family, friends, and just interested people. And then we, we have a toilet. I don't think anyone's used it, but it is there, and every boat has one. Nobody's ever used it? <laughs> I doubt. Yeah, other than that, it's, it's a hollow space here. There is a forward uh, tank you can fill with water here for ballast if, if the conditions dictate, but that's rarely used. It's normally the side-to-side -side ballast. Okay, cool. Um, maybe we have a look further aft? Yeah. Afters, there's lots going on. Uh, back below the bunks here, we have spare diesel. This is on both sides, and again, every boat has a prescribed amount of diesel, so they're all exactly the same. That's considered a piece of safety kit, the spare diesel, so everyone has to have it. Survival suits, again, everyone has an allocated amount of survival suits, all exactly the same. Survival toolkits, we have our own, our own say about what toolkit we use and how many tools we bring. But life jackets, all of the safety gear again is pre-prescribed in the rules and we can't change it. More survival suits. Here we have the spare rigging. This will be spare halyards, spare lock strops and spare sheets along with some lashings and a few essential dog bones for uh, some of the blocks, the deck blocks we have for the Code Zeros and spinnakers. Cell repair bag, nothing too crafty here, just a small bag for essential maintenance and repairs. Uh, more rigging gear in here. This is just rope, loops, dog bones, uh, spare winch handles in case they lose them. Grab bag, as with any ocean going vessel really, you've got to have your safety gear, the grab bag, all the things you take if you jump into the life raft. Boat building, Again, running repairs to the boat, but there's very little in there really that we can deal with and anything major is done by the boatyard, by Volvo and the team when you get back to the dock. Hydraulic spares, engine spares, so the essentials again can be done if you're having any failures en route, but once again servicing and the bulk of it is done on land with, uh, with Volvo. And here we go, the OBR, as they call him, the onboard reporter, sits here. I'll have a computer set up where my sh to wow. torch is shining now. That's not uh, a prime position, is it's it? It's not comfy. See if you can look oh. at the space that they get. It's, yeah. Uh, it's so how? Comfy. I'm trying to work out how high this would. Oh, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> That's a good me, demonstration. I'm not tall. <laughs> uh, they have a, a fan to keep them cool, and this machine here. They can choose any of the camera angles from the spreaders to on the bow, on the back of the boat, in the cockpit, and they are allowed to stream and send a certain amount of media from the boat to shore, uh, but they can't receive anything. No inbound communications to the boat at all to ensure that no one's getting any sneaky information about weather routing. This is a spectacularly uncomfortable position, I guess, at sea. It is, and he has to physically tack himself as well, all of his gear from this side to the other side when the boat tacks. You can see he's got a seat here, uh, and there is a little bit of legroom for him, but yeah, not comfy. And very similar for the navigator, which if we is, go a bit further yeah, forward, this next seat forward. So again, well, this looks a bit more comfortable. we we'll sit down. A bit bigger, so that you can have two people sat side by side, captain and uh, navigator perhaps, to discuss tactics and where they're going. Um, not much here to see now, because it's all been taken off, but they have the navigational computers, the wind instruments, and again, a fan for the hot climates, and all of their electronics for the navigation gear back here. And again, uncomfy position, but this is where the navigator spends 
a lot of their time. Uh, these bits you can see around us, these will be these are the connectors for all of the the grinders we we're looking at upstairs. When they connect to one winch or another winch, these are how they're all connected. You can see uh, the the gear here, this is the central. And that's um, really, other than some electronics and some steering gear, that's about it down below. Very simple, very empty, very uncomfy. <laughs>